Recent research shows that emotional intelligence has an impact on how successful people are in their careers. Being able to read emotional signals is one important part of that emotional intelligence. It allows you to better communicate with others, establish meaningful relationships, and build rapport. Okay, so welcome back. And in this section, we're going to be talking about rapport. You see, when people are like each other, then they tend to like each other. Now, I don't know if you've ever met somebody and, you know, let's say you met somebody at a, at a barbecue or, or at a party. And when you parted ways, you thought, wow, you know what, that was really a nice person. And probably you were in rapport with that person. You see, when people are like each other, they tend to like each other. Now, one of the ways that people very often build rapport is they talk about common experiences. And so they would say, well, where did you go to school? You know, or, or where was your last holiday? And they talk about things that they have in common. And this is a, a nice, easy way for people to build rapport. And it's something that we do naturally. Now, we gain rapport through the process of matching and mirroring. And so what do we mean by that? If you held up your right hand and I held up my left hand as I faced you, that would look like you are looking into a mirror. And so that is called mirroring. Now, if you held up your right hand and I was facing you and I held up my right hand, that would be matching you. So through this process of matching and mirroring, this is how we build rapport. So if you imagine that the person you're interacting with, as if you were mirroring them, there's a mirror in front of that person reflecting back to the individual that you're talking to, the same actions, and even including the voice tone. So if somebody scratches their head, then around roughly five to 10 seconds, you do the same, you scratch your head. If they were to cross their legs, you would do the same. Now, I know there's various situations where it might be difficult to exactly mirror the right movements, but you can do things very similar. You can also match and mirror with the way you speak, the way you interact with somebody. So if you think about it, if somebody's talking to you at 100 miles an hour, but your natural setting is to speak very slowly. This might seem incredibly irritating to that person you're having the conversation with. Also, if you like talking very quickly and it's the other way around, that person who speaks slowly might just be not following what you're saying very well. So it's important that you match what that person is doing. So that person sees in you what they see in themselves. And that's a fantastic way of just getting somebody to feel more comfortable in your presence. Now, the thing is that we want to do this outside of the awareness of the client. So it's very subtly. It's not like your five-year-old that does everything and copies you word for word everything that you say and do. Of course, that would be, it would feel fake. And of course, also it will be right inside the other person's awareness so we want to do this outside of the client's awareness. Now, often people think, oh, but won't they catch me out? And the fact is, no, they won't catch you out. We're doing it subtly, and it's about building this relationship of trust. So what are the things that we can match and mirror then? Well, we've got our physiology. And under physiology, we've got our posture. So how's the person sit? How do they stand? One of the things I like to do is if I, if I meet a client and we're going to sit down, I have them sit down first. And I want to notice, do they sit with their bums right in the back of the chair? Do they lean a bit? Are they leaning to the left or the right? Is their bum more to the front of the chair? Imagine seeing their spine. If you could imagine looking through them and seeing their spine. And so I want to go sit like them just after that. You know, have they got their legs crossed, arms crossed? How are they sitting? What's their posture? Of course, also their gestures. 
Now the thing with gestures is, as your client is doing it, you're not doing it at the same time. And to be fair, for the most part, you're not going to be doing it for anything that you match and mirror. You're going to wait till it's your turn to speak or your opportunity to do so that you can then match and mirror subtly outside the client's awareness. Of course, we can look at handshake. You've noticed how some people's handshake is really firm and somebody else's handshake might be very soft uh, and very gentle. Also proximity, how close does the person stand to us? Some people stand very close, very much in your face, and other people like to have a good distance, the good personal space. Of course, we've got facial expressions like blinking, do they smile? Their breathing, again, the pace and the location, how fast are they breathing? Where are they breathing? Now, blinking and breathing are two of those things that are very much outside of the client's awareness. So if I was going to sit down with my client and I assume their posture and I blink when they blink and I breathe as they breathe, one of the things you can consider if you couldn't see if the client was breathing or not because they might have a thick jacket on, when somebody's talking, typically they're exhaling. So you could imagine as they're talking out, of, then you would be exhaling out. We could also look at voice tone, which is the pitch. We've got tempo, which is the speed. We've got timbre, which is the quality of the voice. And of course, volume, which is loud or soft. So the tonality, a man wouldn't speak in a try to match and mirror a woman and speak in a high tonality. Of course, she probably might sound like Minnie Mouse. So you'd speak in a high tonality for a man. And vice versa, a lady's not going to speak in a deep voice to match and mirror a man. She would just talk in a low tonality for a lady. Speed, of course, how fast and slow. Quality. Some people speak very crisp and clear, while other people might have a, a raspiness to their voice. And volume, again, is self-explanatory. Then, of course, the words, which make up the 7% of our communication, the predicates. So, what types of words is my client using? If they say something like, can you see that? What does it appear like? Those are visual predicates. Somebody who says, ooh, that feels great, or I want to get a grasp of it, those are kinesthetic predicates. Somebody says, ooh, it needs to make sense of things. That's a auditory digital predicate. So I want to listen to the types of predicates that my client is using so that I can use the predicates best for them. Similarly, also keywords. In fact, I remember when I was at school, we went on a particular uh, scout's outing and the person was, who was taking us around, every time he said something, he would say, whatever the case might be. And so, at one stage, he asked, what do you use this fire extinguisher for? Now, bearing in mind, I was a young lad and I, I was actually just being a little bit cheeky. And I said, well, you know, you use this fire extinguisher for this, 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 and whatever the case might be. And although I was being very a little bit cheeky, actually it built great rapport. Because I was using his key words. Now, of course, we've already spoken about common experiences and associations as well. So these are some of the things we can look at as we match and mirror and we build rapport with other people. And so, how would you know that you've got rapport? Well, there's four indicators of rapport. And the first is this internal feeling. So, this is a feeling that you have with inside yourself. You could almost describe it as that little bit of a butterfly or giddy feeling. It's not that you're in love. It's just that little bit of excited feeling. The second might be you might notice a color shift within the other person. And then third, which is optional and, and sometimes sounds like a chat-up line, 
is something that they might say like have we met before or it feels like I've known you for some time and whilst we're matching and mirroring what we're doing is we're actually busy pacing the other person's experience and then the fourth indicative rapport is actually leading and so this would be where if you've ever noticed you have a sip of your drink and then shortly after the person that you're with they then have a sip of their drink or you uncross your legs and the other person then uncrosses their legs and so this is leading where the other person then unconsciously follows what you do now this is how we build rapport and of course the four indicators of rapport 